Hey guys, uh, hopefully uh, this uh, you guys can see this live stream. Let me see, let me set this up. I'm just, this is my first time using StreamYard here. We did a little test run, but let's see what we can do here. All right. All right, guys, uh, I think I'm live. I hope I'm live. Let's see if we can. Uh... Yeah, I can hear myself. Can everybody hear me? If you, if somebody can hear me, please uh, put something in the chat that says you can hear me, but I can hear myself here. Tony Manning, how you doing? Can you hear me? Hey, fishing buddy, how you doing? I'm coming in loud and clear. Oh, thanks a lot, buddy. Uh, it's my, I mean, we did a test live stream, I think about a week ago or two weeks ago. Uh, uh, so this is kind of like my first live stream. So hopefully it'll go okay. Uh, clears up sky up, clear sky up. Okay, great. Uh, hey, we, we're going to do a basic topic today, guys. Uh, it's going to be on planning your first trip to the Philippines. Hey, John Thomas, how you doing? Uh, I know probably a lot of you guys have been to the Philippines and stuff, but uh, there are other people that probably uh, have never been to the Philippines or maybe have never really been overseas, and it's kind of like their first trip. So this is more geared towards the people that really don't have much experience or maybe no experience going to a foreign country. And maybe, uh, you know, they got to the point where they want to go to the Philippines or, and again, we're going to use the Philippines as a topic here. It could be any foreign country. It could be, you know, Thailand. It could be, uh, South, you know, anywhere in Southeast Asia. But we're going to kind of talk about how you want to prepare yourself uh, to take a trip to Southeast Asia. And again, we'll use Philippines uh, as a, uh, as, as for the example here. Okay, guys. Uh, I'll probably, you know, talk a little bit, then I'll probably stop and I'll answer a few questions, uh, if any. And then, uh, I don't know, I got about maybe 12, 13, 14 different things I, I kind of want to talk about, how to get yourself ready, you know, for the Philippines, okay? Uh, to get, you know, just to make your trip more enjoyable. Uh, because again, uh, you know, you're going to be, what is it, 8,000 miles away, whatever it is. And you don't want to run into any issues of maybe getting, you know, getting a hold of cash or, uh, you know, uh, not having uh, access to, uh, you know, your cell phone's not working or this or that. You know, again, we'll talk about a lot of things like that. So, again, we just want to prepare ourselves to be going overseas. Uh, Mechtel number one, hi, I'm a troll. Okay, great, great. You know, if you're a troll, you're a troll guy. I don't have a problem with trolls coming into this uh, live stream. Uh, if you act stupid, I'll just get rid of you, based plain and simple. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'll wait a few minutes, and then we'll start. And then, uh, again, we'll just kind of talk about the basics. And I'm, I'm sure you guys, like I said, have heard about the basics before. Uh, but it's, it's good to bring them back up, all right? Wait a couple of minutes, and we'll go ahead and start. All right. Uh, yeah, we got seven people watching. That's cool. Uh, for a first live stream, that'll be good. Hey, uh, okay. So, you know, whether you, you guys have uh, had experience when you traveled to other countries when you were younger or had no experience whatsoever, maybe you're in your 50s or your 60s, uh, maybe you're thinking about checking out the Philippines or Thailand or uh, maybe Cambodia, uh, just because maybe you're thinking about getting out of the States. You know, you're thinking about leaving the U.S., uh, maybe you want to join, uh, you want to kind of move to another country just because, uh, you know, for multiple multitude of reasons, maybe you're just getting sick of the, of the Western world, <laughs> you're getting sick of your home country, maybe it's just getting too costly to live in your home country uh, for whatever reason. You want to get married again, you don't want to get married in your home country, you want to go to 
to the Philippines or to Thailand to get married. Hey, you know, whatever your reason is to go, and again, we're using the Philippines, to go to the Philippines, hey, more power to you, man. If it's to move there, to live there, if it's for a woman, if it's low cost of living, whatever it is, it's more power to you, okay? But you got to, you're at a point where you've made that move, you wanna make that move, but the thing is, you don't wanna just go and just move to a foreign country without checking it out, and that's kind of my whole point of this video. Joe Tom, uh, what do you do if your ATM card expires? If you live there, I hear it's hard to get one one mail there. Uh, you know what? Let me at least get this uh, live stream going, Joe Tom, and I will uh, answer that question, okay? But on this video, it's more for like your first trip out there. Uh, this is more like a recon type of trip where you're going to go out there uh, for about a month. You want to check it out. And then you want to come back to your home country. This is not really one where you're actually moving there full time. I will do that in the future. Uh, I do have a lot of videos on my channel about that. But, okay, I'm going to answer your question real quick here uh, before I start, okay? Uh, if your ATM, let's see, it says, what do, you, what do you do if your ATM card expires? If you live there, I hear it's hard to get one mailed to you. Uh, you know, hey. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, uh, Philippines fun with JLB. You're actually my, uh, I think one person did a uh, super chat to me one time before. You're actually my second super chat, but thank you very much. Um, look, if you've got an eight, if you're living there and you've got an ATM card that's about to expire, first of all, uh, uh, it's, you want that ATM card to be sent to you in the States. Okay. So I, uh, hopefully you have a, a traveling mailbox or some kind of mailbox there, or you might have a relative where an ATM card is coming to you uh, or it's coming to that location. Right. And what you do there from there, you can have it FedEx to you. Okay. Uh, do not have the mail sent to you. Uh, regular post office through the Philippine post office, okay? So use like uh, UPS or use FedEx and have that sent to you wherever you're at in the Philippines. There will be a pickup location somewhere. If you're Even if you're in a smaller town, like for example here in Dumaguete, we've got a FedEx location. Now there's a FedEx location, there's two locations. There's a FedEx location where you can actually send something to the U.S. only only to send stuff to the U.S. And there's a different location where you can pick up stuff that is sent from you, sent to you from the U.S. So again, there's a FedEx location here. Uh, there should be a UPS location. Uh, so you'll have to kind of look around what's available in a town that you live in. But whatever you do, send it to yourself, a private mail. Do not send it to the Philippine post office because you may never get it okay uh other people i've seen done uh, what they do is they've got a they have a p.o box and they uh uh now they're able to get uh mail they're able to receive mail if they have a p.o box at a philippine post office box at a philippine uh, uh how should i say post office uh but i don't know i they've, they've got luck getting stuff there i don't have a, a p.o box here uh, but if I send stuff first class, uh, private mail through FedEx or UPS, it'll come directly to my home address here. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, again, if you have other questions, uh, please feel free to leave a comment. But let's go ahead and, and start here, okay, guys? Uh, now, the first thing you guys want to do, and, and again, this is the guys that are pretty much coming to the Philippines is their first time or maybe first time traveling overseas. The first thing you want to do, guys, before you even think about anything is get yourself a passport, okay? You want to get a passport. Uh, in the U.S., I think a passport nowadays costs the paper passport, okay? The, the book costs about $110. It takes about three weeks, three to four weeks to get it. Uh, and that's the first thing you want to do. If you don't have a passport, if it's your first time getting a passport, you're going to have to make a, uh, 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 an online uh, appointment to go into a, like a, um, like a uh, pass, uh, an office where you can get a passport. Uh, it can be your uh, city hall, local city hall, uh, or it can be your, uh, um, what do you call, uh, your local uh, post office, okay? But you're going to have, hey, Roger Miller, how you doing? <laughs> Thanks a lot for the 100 pesos. Yes, do not fly... Chinese Airlines, guys, I, I never have never flown China Airlines. 
Uh, look, it's cheaper. You can get some better rates on China Airlines. But the problem I'm hearing is that when you go through China, you literally have to go through customs again to 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 get to your uh, to the Philippines. So I don't want to be dealing through customs again. It's a lot of hassles, uh, a lot of issues with uh, Chinese officials not speaking English. From my from my understanding, uh, I don't go through China Airlines, even if it's a fifty dollars or eighty dollars savings. I would highly recommend you guys go through e uh, either Korea, Taiwan, or Japan. Pay the extra fifty bucks. A lot less hassles. You don't have to go through customs again through these countries. You just basically go to your next gate and you wait. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, you'll have to go through a little, uh, they'll check your bag and stuff like that. But again, you don't have to go through customs again in these other countries, uh, like unlike what you have to do in China, from my understanding. I've never used China Airlines, but everybody I talk to, it's a big hassle and not worth the hassle to save an extra 50 bucks. Uh, Mrs. Hamager, I'm bringing my washing machine and face mask in my luggage. All right, good for you, Hemi. Great. All right. So uh, going back to the topic, guys, <clears throat> the first thing you want to do is you want to get a passport. And like I said, it's about 110 bucks. Uh, take a direct flight layover sucks, Joe Tom. Yeah, true. Uh, it's harder and harder to find direct flights nowadays. Uh, I think Philippine Airlines, if you take Philippine Airlines from uh, California, you can get a direct flight. Other than that, other parts of the U.S., you're going to have to have one stopover. In the old days, direct flights were very common, but nowadays uh, – you got to have one stop, guys. And again, like I said, uh, the only three airlines I would recommend going to the Philippines would be Korean Airlines, Asiana Airlines, or Eva Air. That's the only three. All right. Uh, let's see. Going through. Uh, okay. So you want to get your passport, guys. First thing you do is you get your passport. It takes about three to four weeks to get your passport. And and uh, you kind of, uh, I don't think uh, nowadays you, you can put a rush on your passport, but there's no, re no reason to, because the next thing I would recommend after you, you know, you put in for your passport is to book your trip. All right. And what you want to do is you want to book your trip six months out. Just book your trip guys. And you'll get a really good rate if you book your trip six months out. But unfortunately you will not be able to book your trip until you get your passport. All right. So if it's your first passport, it's going to take about three to four weeks. You're going to have to make an appointment online to go in and physically to bring some documentation in to get your passport. Uh, if, it, if you just need to renew your passport, you can do it online and uh, you don't have to make an appointment to go anywhere. Uh, and then that, that you can also do a rush on it, but there's no reason to do a rush because you'll have to pay extra fees. Just go ahead and get your passport. Now, once you get your passport, go ahead and uh, uh, book, your, book, book your flight right away. You want to book your flight six months out and just go ahead and book your flight and you're going to get some good deals on it. You book your flight out six months ahead, you're probably going to get a, a round trip flight anywhere from, it could be anywhere from 500 up to about 700. Probably right somewhere in the middle, you'll be booking around about 600, six and a quarter. Uh, hey, Michael Corleone, how you doing? Uh, let's see. Everyone thinks JLB. No, I don't. I don't have a problem with JLB. I don't think he's a joke. If you want to be uh, disruptive, I'll knock you out of this chat. Uh, if you want to be a jerk, if you want to just be cool about it, you want to hang out, no problem. All right. Let's see, Hemi. Uh, no, I'm saying book your tickets out six months in advance is what I'm saying, Hemi. Uh, if you want to get a good price, you want to book your tickets out six months in advance. <clears throat> Let's see. Hey, expat at large, how you doing? Yeah, if you can get a nonstop flight and get a good price, expat at large, go you know go for it. But nowadays, these uh, nonstop flights are pretty expensive. Let's see. All right. Okay, here's what we're gonna do with you. And we'll put you in timeout. All right. Okay. All right. So you, you know, let's put it this way: you got your you got your passport, uh, and then you went ahead and you booked your tickets online. Uh, you booked your flight six months out in advance. Again, again, guys, this is just my recommendation. You can do whatever you want. You can book a ticket two weeks before you want you leave. 
but you're going to pay a lot more money. So whatever you want, you know, if you want to book your tickets two weeks out, that's cool. All I'm trying to do is save you guys some money. So I would strongly suggest you book your ticket out six months in advance. All right. Uh, so you got your ticket, you got your passport, you got your ticket. Now, the next thing you want to do is uh, make sure uh, you unlock your cell phone, guys. Uh, if Now, I used T-Mobile a few years back, and I was able to uh, use my T-Mobile phone uh, in the Philippines. Uh, but it's going to cost you long-distance uh, international calls, right? But T-Mobile's got some packages where it's cheap per minute, uh, but you're going to have to pay a higher monthly fee. What you want to do is what I would recommend is uh, if you bring in your smart, you're going to bring your smartphone, make sure it's unlocked. Okay. And then when you uh, hit the airport, when you come into the Philippines or, you know, once you get out of the airport or in, at the airport, get a SIM card, guys, get an international SIM card. You'll get a, a Philippine phone number, pop it into your phone and you're good to go. <laughs> I mean, it's about as simple as it gets. Island Traveler, uh, get him out of here, okay? Philippine Fun with JLB, don't think my twin. Nah, it's cool, JLB. Uh, you know, I got rid of Hemi, if anybody else gets stupid. All right, well, we'll get rid of this guy, too. We don't need the, the nonsense. Michael Corleone. All right, he's out of here. Uh, Expand at Large, Discord is a chismis. Anyway, nothing positive. Yeah, that's true, uh, Expand at Large. And look, uh, I'll just get rid of guys. If they get stupid, these trolls, and I'll just get rid of them. I really don't even care about these trolls. Uh, <clears throat> and next time, I'll have a few of you guys. Uh, I'll give you guys some wrenches. I do got some people with wrenches. Uh, this is my first time here. I don't want to deal with trying to give you guys a wrench right now. I'll, I'll uh, put some additional wrenches to you, Jeff, if you uh, want to come into the uh, – to the chat, plus eventually, uh, once I'm comfortable on how to figure out how to give you guys, put a link in there. I'll get some of you guys on on my live stream. Right now, it's my first one. I'm just trying to make it through the first one. <laughs> yeah, whoever he is, I, I don't even care. Uh, all right. Uh, and uh, let's see. Yeah, I just got rid of a couple of guys. If there's more trolls, I'll get rid of them. That's fine with me. I don't have a problem with that, all right? So, okay. So, basically, you uh, let's go back to the topic. You got your passport. You got your ticket. It's six months out. Uh, so, you know when you're coming. Uh, you you have unlocked your cell phone, and uh, hopefully the uh, phone company that you're dealing with has unlocked the phone. Make sure your phone's unlocked so you're ready. To, you, so, your phone's ready to go. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, and, again, you're still in your home country. All we're trying to do is get ready uh, to go to the Philippines. And this could be your first trip and most likely uh, could be maybe your second trip. So it's most it's geared most towards guys that really don't have a lot of uh, experience traveling, and especially if it's their first trip, okay? That's what this video is about. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Joe Tom. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good idea, Joe Tom. I would highly recommend that. If you're going to be, uh, you know, just playing around, bring the condoms, guys. Uh, yeah, they will expand at large. I expect that, but that's okay. Uh, that's true. Protect yourself, Joe Tom. Uh, good. Uh, it's, a, it's a good uh, recommendation. I would highly recommend that. Because uh, you might not find condoms that will fit you out there, so bring your own. <laughs> All right. So, okay, guys. So, all right. So, we're starting to get ready. Uh, and next thing I would do to your phone, uh, download Grab, the Grab app to your phone, guys. Because you want to use Grab when you get to the Philippines, all right? Uh, now, look, uh, if you don't have Grab on your phone when you first touch down, I know in Manila, uh, and I'm sure probably in Cebu now, in Manila, there's uh, right when you come out of the customs, uh, if, if you've got a uh, check-in bag, you grab your bag, then you keep going go through the double doors. And if you uh, go across the street to the right, where the old, uh, where the white taxis used to be is now the grab stand. You can go there, walk down there, and uh, they'll get a grab for you, okay? Uh, but if you can get grab on your phone, it's great. I would recommend it. Now, whatever hotel that you guys stay at, 
they can get a grab for you as well. All the hotels will, will get a grab for you as well. No problem. It's when you want to grab, when you're out on your own, you're somewhere and you want to get a grab, that's when you're going to need that grab app on your phone. Okay, guys? But other than that, the hotels, all the hotels will get a grab for you and you can get a grab at the airport in Manila. I don't know if they got a grab. I'm sure they got a grab stand in Cebu Airport. Uh, and I don't know if they have one at Clark. Uh, but you'll be able to get a grab out of the airport. All right? Let's see. Uh, uh, Jerry is an excellent speaker, so they're jealous. Yeah, don't worry about it, uh, JLB. If they attack, they attack. No problem, man. We just I'll just get rid of them. Not a big issue. Hey, Lefty All Around. How you doing? Didn't see you. I just saw you there. <laughs> Let's see. For some reason, they pick on Jerry. Just hide them from the channel. Not a big deal. <clears throat> what do you think? Was this, this last? Was this was a Pettis last week? Week for two weeks? I'm not sure what what you think. Uh, what, what that question is. But anyway, uh, yeah, yellow cabs are still okay. You're gonna pay a little bit more for yellow cabs, guys. Uh, I think from what I remember, the white cabs is 40 pesos to get in. The yellow is 70. Now, that might have gone up. That was a, a, about two, three years ago. It was 70 to get in. Uh, the meter, meter uh, probably goes a little bit faster than the white taxis. Again, it's going to cost you a little bit more to use a white taxi than a white taxi. That's for sure. Now, I think the yellow cabs actually work for the airports, but the white taxis are independent. Uh, so you're more apt not to get scammed by the yellow cabs. But I think... From what I recall, JLB did a video where the yellow caps tried to scam him or somebody I remember did a video where the meter was running fast. But again, uh, if you can afford, if you can uh, avoid these yellow or white taxis, please do and get a uh, grab. But if you had to take a taxi, I would definitely take the yellow cab over the white cab. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So, hey, so, okay. Like, so. You got your passport. You're uh, you already booked your ticket six months out in advance. Uh, your phone's ready to go. It's unlocked. You download a grab to it. Now the next thing you want to do is pick some channels, some YouTube channels that you guys want to follow. Okay. And here's the reason why. Again, you don't want to come in cold into the Philippines not knowing anything. Start following some channels. Now, there's 50 million channels about the Philippines out there, guys. Uh, pick your channels and start learning a little bit about what to do. You know, some maybe learn a little bit about the culture in the Philippines. Uh, learn about certain uh, areas of the Philippines. Learn a little bit about Manila. Maybe learn about Cebu. Uh, you want to start looking at uh, some of these uh, channels. And then they're for free. One of the things I would recommend is if you guys got to pay somebody for them to consult you to come to the Philippines, don't do it. There's a lot of channels on here that offer free advice uh, that will be able to help you, okay? If you want to uh, send these, if you're comfortable with these channels, you're happy with the kind of advice that they give you, and a lot of these channels, like Philippines with JLB, uh, he'll have different guys on that uh, maybe our first timers going to the Philippines uh, that maybe made some mistakes and you're gonna learn from their mistakes, okay? Uh, and nothing wrong with that. One of the things I would recommend guys, the best way to learn is through other people's mistakes. It's unfortunate how, why I say that, but that's true. Oh, sorry about that. Hang in fishing buddy. There you go. Uh, uh, hey, fishing buddy, I probably got some keywords in there and probably when you say a certain keyword, it might put you on hold, but. I'll kind of keep a tab on you. On the next live stream, I'll give you a, a, a wrench, and I'll give GLB a wrench as well. Uh, let's see. There are a lot of channels out there that will be able to help you, uh, and they'll have a lot of good live streams, or they may have some regular videos where they'll talk about certain aspects of the Philippines. That will help you, whether how to deal with taxis or how to deal with uh, Filipinas, you know, uh, or how to deal with, uh, you know, when you go to a restaurant, what to expect. There's so many different topics out there and talks about the culture. These channels will be able to help you, uh, and they don't charge, okay? Now, if you like a channel and you like the type of content that they give you, you want to super chat them, 
And if they have a super chat button, yeah, give them some money. Whether it's five bucks, ten bucks, whatever, two bucks, three bucks, it's cool. Uh, I would highly recommend if you like certain channels, support the channels that help your cause for whatever reason you're you know, you're going to the Philippines. If they help you and you want to support them, do it. Now, some channels uh, will only take donations uh, of cash. Other channels will not take cash. They might only take. Uh, uh, Balik Bayan boxes, and then they just give them out and stuff like that. So again, if you're gonna send certain uh, items to the uh, certain uh, Balik Bayan boxes or certain items to the Philippines for a certain guy, a channel to pass them out, make sure that the guy's legitimate. Now, if he's only doing it occasionally, and it's great, he may not need to be uh, like a uh, like a legalized uh, nonprofit uh, in the Philippines. But if if it's somebody that's continuously asking for money or uh, types of donations, then make sure they are legal in the Philippines because there are a lot of uh, uh, guys that are running these, uh, supposed to have nonprofits, uh, that they say they have nonprofits in the Philippines, and they don't, they're illegal. So again, uh, make sure you check the channel out. Uh, if it's just a you know once in a while that these people, these, these channels are doing a spaghetti fest or they're doing, a, I don't know, or they're passing out some stuff, yeah, they, they probably won't have a, a 501c3. They're not going to be a legal entity in the Philippines, but that's okay. They're only doing it maybe once a month, a couple times a month. Uh, not a big deal. You know, I've sent uh, stuff to – I've sent Balik Bayan boxes to channels like that, and they've, they've passed them out. They've literally did a video where they passed out my stuff, uh, and they did a video on it, and that's okay. They don't even have to do a video on it. I don't have to see it. I already know that these people will, you know, pass the stuff out as, as a – as they see fit, so I don't have a problem with uh, these channels, okay? But there are certain channels that I would not uh, send anything to because basically if you send them money, very little of that money will get to the people in the Philippines. Most of it will be to uh, <laughs> fund their trip or their vacation in the Philippines. Uh, let me look in here. Um, Left Lefty Alora, I just noticed you have a super chat. Good on you. You should do more of these. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to start doing a little bit more live streams. Uh, and just talk about, you know, just some basic topics instead of actually uh, doing the uh, video without uh, any kind of interaction. Sometimes it's kind of cool to interact with people, and I think people like that. Philippines with JLB, they want to follow Rike and be able to hook up with 1920, eh, not knowing to pay rental fee. Uh, okay, well, you know, again, it's people do what they want to do. They want to follow who they want to follow. Uh, we don't do rentals here, guys. <laughs> I'm happily married. I'm not going to talk about rentals. I, I don't rent anything, anybody. I've never paid for anything. So that's just the way it is. That's just the way I roll. Uh, don't give to any foreign charities there. Uh, yeah, a lot of scammers, island traveler, but there's a few that I would definitely uh, send stuff to. No GoFundMe or any of that mess. Uh, if you see a GoFundMe or some charity, stay away. Well, you know what? You just have to check them out. Uh, if you're going to... If you see somebody with a GoFundMe or they're saying they're a charity, just go ahead and ask them for the paperwork. And there's tons of paperwork they're going to have to show you uh, from the Philippines uh, as well as their home country that they're a legal entity. You know, Expat at large. Honestly, ever since my first time going to the Philippines, I didn't have to listen to half the degenerates on YouTube since. There wasn't any YouTube anyway. Uh, okay. Uh, that's probably the best at large. Okay. Fishing buddy. Yes, there are some legit outfits you can send money by unboxes to, but you should still be careful who you send to. I would definitely agree. Philippine JLB, only Travis Craft was there with a channel in 2006. Yeah, there were really not very many people with channels in 2006. I mean, I started uh, in this genre back in 2017 and even, I'm sorry, in 2014. And they weren't really, even in 2014, they weren't that many uh, channels. Let's see, expat at large. But we'll say hearing from people's experience, the stuff especially with how some ladies scam you. If you had saved me a few times, my first time in the Philippines, uh, okay. Look guys, there's a lot of people that come to the Philippines and they get scammed. And that's that's for sure, okay? I look at some of these channels, they're going to bash Filipinas because they're scamming guys and blah, blah, blah. And they make it seem like all Filipinas are scammers. Nah, 
That's just, I, to me personally, a, a small percentage of these Filipinos will scam you. And that's just like any country. You got the good and you got the bad in any country you go to. All right. Scam stories are the best. Yeah, it gets a lot of views. But uh, look, I'm not going to sit here and give you guys scam stories. I never got scammed uh, from a Filipina. Uh, but again, I'm not going to sit here and give you guys scam stories just to get views. All right. I'm just going to give you the facts of what my uh, my experiences are in the Philippines. And really, to be honest with you, uh, the honest Filipinos or Filipinas far outweigh the scammers. But then again, it's just from my perspective, because I put myself in a situation where I rarely ever get scammed. OK, uh, so again, it's up to you. It's up to the foreigner. You're going to come here to a foreign country. If you get scammed, probably a lot, some of that is on you, guy. Maybe you picked the wrong girl. Maybe you didn't see the uh, the red flags. Again, that's another video in itself. And I'll do a video on that if you guys want me to. Fishing buddy, it's easy to get scammed if you allow yourself to get scammed. Right there. There you go. That's exactly, I, I couldn't have said any better. So if somebody, if you get scammed, you got to be at least 50% at fault. Okay? So don't just blame that person that tried to scam you. Uh, and I've had people that try to, you know, scam me for a few bucks here, a few bucks there. As a matter of fact, guys, I want to tell you, I've had a, a foreigner that tried to scam me the other day. Uh, my wife and I, and again, I'm getting off the subject here, but that's okay. My wife and I went to find um, uh, another pool to swim at because a lot of times at the pool I swim at here in Dumaguete, the main pool, it's shut down for a week or two for cleaning, blah, blah, blah. So we're looking for a pool, and we went to this university on the other side of town. And I'm out there waiting out front, right? And my wife goes into the school to see if I'm able to to, uh, to swim there. And what happened was I'm standing there, on my bike's on the side. I'm just wiping my face. I got my helmet off, waiting for my wife. I saw a foreigner on the school. He saw me, so he stops, and he makes a U-turn. He comes up to me, and he goes, hey, how you doing? Looks like it's hot out here, huh? Because I was just kind of, uh, you know. I uh, had my do-rag out, and I was just kind of wiping my face. I go, yeah. So he starts talking to me, asking some questions. I'm thinking, hmm. So I go, hey, you know, what's up? And, I, you know, I started asking him some questions. I flipped it on him. So apparently the guy's been here for about 15 years in the Philippines, right? Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, then, then my wife comes out, and we start bullshitting with the guy for a few minutes. All of a sudden the guy asked me for 50 pesos. <laughs> I'm serious. I go, hey, he goes, can, you, can I borrow 50 pesos? And I said to him, I says, well, I said, what do you need 50 pesos for? And again, uh, I, you know, I remember the guys when I was in Makati, some dude tried to scam me for some money, and I, I had my camera on. But I, I had my camera, but I forgot to turn it on. I didn't have it on. So I asked the guy, why, uh, why do you want 50 pesos for? He goes, hey, my wife's up, uh, my wife's in, uh, in Baiz or Bai Bai, it's a it's a town north of uh, of uh, Sibulan. Her truck broke down, and I go, well, "What's your wife do?" She goes, "Well, she's a teacher at uh, at uh, Similan, uh, at Silliman University." He told me she's a teacher at Silliman. Okay, so I go, "Okay," uh, I go, "But what she what she doing up in Bai uh, in uh, Bai Bai?" And uh, I don't know if he, she told me, "Oh, well, uh, she went to visit a relative or something." And I go, uh, "Well." I says, don't you have any money on you? He goes, no. Listen to this. He goes, no, I don't have any money on me. I go, well, why don't you carry some money on you? He goes, because somebody will rip me off. They'll uh, rip me off. I go, what do you mean they'll rip you off? He goes, oh, yeah, I've been ripped off before. I go, you mean to tell me you can't carry 150 pesos on you? What, somebody going to hold you up? He goes, well, they try to rip me off. I go, so right there, there's a red flag. It's bullshit, right? So I go, well, hey, I tell you what. I says, let me verify with your wife that she broke down in bye bye because he's riding, he's driving up there in bye bye to help her out. Because why well, don't have my cell phone on me? I go, wait a minute. I go, why don't you have your cell phone on you? Because well, I don't know. It's just like that. He didn't know why he didn't have his cell phone on me. And he goes, well, they might rip off my cell phone too. Uh, all right, Marco Corleone, you got to go, brother. Time out again. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, yeah, so it was kind of funny. Uh, sorry about that, Jeff, but I got rid of the guy. All right. Uh, so it was really funny. So he doesn't have a cell phone on him. He doesn't have any money. So I couldn't really verify. If I would have called his wife 
And she would have said, yeah, I broke down. I would probably would have just gave it to her. And I asked the guy, I go, look, how could it be a loan? Uh, you know, how are you going to pay me back? I mean, you just you don't have 50 pesos. I'm probably not, you know, you're not going to be able to pay me back because, well, I got to go. Uh, I got to keep working <laughs> or something like that. So basically what this guy is doing is probably cruising around, see if he can find some expats that he can get some money from. And I go, yeah, man, I, I'll see you later, man. Have a good one. And again, he's been in, he's been living in Dumaguete for the past 15 years and, and he's been married for the past 14 years. And I asked him, I says, well, how much does your wife make? You know, uh, you know, and, and he didn't know how much his wife made uh, as a professor at Silliman University, right? So I knew right there that was a lie because everybody knows how much their wives make. I mean, if your wife's got a job, you know how much she makes. So that was kind of funny. So again, uh, classic, like Fishing Buddy says, classic line. <laughs> yeah, classic line. Uh, and, and it was really funny. So again, uh, I didn't. I wasn't able to tape it. I forgot to pull my camera out. It was in my wife's bag. So, but it would have been a good one. But again, that was my first time somebody approached me. Uh, for, first foreigner in the in Dumaguete that approached me. But I'm sure there'll be much more. <laughs> uh, bring your knee pads, oh, Cornel. Oh, you're gonna be. Uh, yeah, just let it go, man. Uh, I'll just I'll just block him out of there. Not a problem. If he comes back and acts stupid, I'll just put him on timeout again. All right, so. Okay, guys, getting back to the topic. Let's see. Expand at large. When I went in 2009, a black American hit me up outside of Terminal 2, telling me he was robbed. His brother was sending a ticket. He wanted some help. Gave him a 1,000 pesos. Uh, well, that's cool. I mean, hey, if you want to give him some money, it's up to you, man. All right, guys, going back to the topic. So, so far, you got your passport. You got your ticket to the Philippines six months out. You unlocked your cell phone. You downloaded Grab to your cell phone. Make sure you got the Grab app. Now what you're trying to do is you're still in the States now, right? You're still in your home country. You, you've picked out some uh, some channels to go to, to, some YouTube channels, to get your information, to be have some type of idea what you're getting into when you get to the Philippines. Uh, and again, uh, whatever channels you're comfortable with, it's up to you. Uh, but my recommendation is don't pay for someone to consult you on an hourly basis. I would not recommend that. Plenty of, uh, of free information on YouTube, guys. So now you've got some information. You're getting an idea of what's going on. You know, you still got six months before you go to the Philippines. Maybe you start following some live streams. Maybe you get on a few live streams. Uh, just to talk to some guys, get some information. So now you're getting a, a pretty good idea. And actually, you know, going back to when you bought your ticket, one of the things I want to recommend is you got three choices going to the Philippines. You're either going to have Manila, Cebu, and I think there's flights coming into Clark now. So I would recommend probably Manila on your first trip, but it's up to you. So whichever town – the city that you picked, that's kind of where you want to, uh, you know, start out at. All right, guys. So again, this, these are for the for the guys going out there for their first trip. So let's just say that you picked Manila as as your first trip, and that's where your round trip ticket is going to be in and out of Manila. All right. So okay. So uh, what what I would also recommend is now uh, you've made. Uh, you, uh, how should I say, you've gotten some information, you know, you've got six months before you go to the Philippines, so you got plenty of time to educate yourself on the Philippines, right? And what I would also recommend when you book uh, your trip out, it's your first trip, make it less than 30 days. 30 days is more than enough for you to get your feet wet. Uh, again, this is your first trip going out there. You want to do more than one trip. And again, for those of you guys that are thinking about moving to the Philippines, don't just move straight out, you know, without making a few trips to the Philippines. Uh, get your feet wet first before you just move out there. So this is your first trip. I recommend any trips that you take out there, guys, uh, as a tourist, and book them up to under 30 days. Book it to 29 days, all right? So then you don't have to get a forwarding ticket if it's less than 30 days. If your return trip is less than 30 days, your return flight, then you don't need an onward ticket. 
Okay. So, all right. So, you know, let's just say you're starting out in Manila. Then the next thing you got to do is it's you, it's up to you. Uh, with the internet nowadays, you can pre, you know, you can book your hotel ahead of time. And one other thing I would recommend when you book a ticket to the Philippines, make sure you come in on a Monday or a Tuesday during the week. Don't come in on a weekend uh, because then, uh, you know, some of your, uh, uh, the hotels that you may want to stay at may be already booked. But if, you know, you can book a ticket out to your hotel six months ahead of time, not a problem. But uh, you'll probably get a better rate if you come in on a Monday, on a weekday, instead of a weekend. All right, guys. So at this point, you know, if you want to, uh, I would suggest that you uh, book your hotel tickets. Uh, book your hotel ahead of time. So you're coming in, say, for three weeks. What I would suggest is uh, if you're in Manila, book a hotel. I would say start out in Makati or Ermita. And book a hotel for a week and hang out there, guys. All right? Uh, now, if you want to go on your second week somewhere else, then, uh, yeah, then go ahead and do that. But then if on your first trip, just hang out in Manila. Hang out in Manila for your first week. Maybe go to hang out in Makati for a week. And there's plenty of things to do around Makati area. There's a green belt. Uh, there's the Greenbelt Mall. There's a few other malls that you can go to. Uh, you can take uh, public transportation, get yourself uh, kind of acclimated to taking jitneys and stuff. You're not far from the MRT. You're a jitney right away from the MRT. Uh, so again, uh, again, this is again, this is a trip to get yourself a little bit, get your feet wet. Uh, you're not going to be bouncing all over the Philippines on your first trip. You just want to kind of get accustomed to, you know, the what the, what it's like being in the Philippines, uh, what it's like to uh, uh, to to move around, uh, because again, you got no transportation, you don't have a scooter, you don't have any of that. All right, you're in Manila. Now, you you want to you can book your hotel reservations for a week, for the first week. That's what I would recommend you do. If you start out in Makati, then go ahead and book it. And then what you might want to do is the second week, maybe move and go to Ermita. So you can hang out for a week in Makati, do some stuff around there. And hey, uh, in the meantime, if you want to meet uh, a girl while you're in Makati, why not? So what you can do is, hey, so if you already know you're going to stay in Makati your first week, then what you want to do, uh, and you're going to be in Manila majority of the time, then what I would suggest that you do is if you go online and you want to meet somebody, uh, meet somebody that's from Manila, okay? And what I would also suggest is that if, you know, if, if you can meet somebody that's cool, you want to meet somebody that kind of show you around, that's the advantage of meeting somebody, all right? It doesn't have to be a girlfriend. It could just be you can meet somebody that might show you around Manila, maybe be a tour guide, <laughs> something, you know, take them out to lunch. Uh, you know, maybe take them out to dinner, whatever, take them out to a movie, might be a friend. Why not? If you meet somebody that's cool like that, that's got some time, you want to show you around Manila, hey, why not? There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, Porta Galara is only a few hours away from Manila. Yeah, and that's what I would recommend. Uh, uh, what I would also recommend, if you want to spend the first weekend in Makati just to get, you know, uh, just to get your uh, acclimated, that's great. But after that, on the second week, if you want to plan to go outside of Makati, even if you want to take a flight to, say, one of the other islands or something like that, uh, then do so. OK, uh, you can wait till you get there. Uh, just what I would recommend is you, uh, you bring a laptop with you or you bring an iPad with you uh, or on your smartphone. You can book, you know, book another flight to go out of town. Uh, you can do that when you get there. Now, there are many ways of paying for these uh, for a flight. You can pay it online with a credit card. Uh, you can uh, pay uh, at a local 7-Eleven or at a Lulier. There's many ways of you can pay it cash. Uh, but again, what I would recommend is uh, you can go your second week to another island. If you feel comfortable, do it. But at this point, hey, you at least book one week in Makati so you know when you get there, 
uh, right from the airport. You don't have to worry about a hotel or anything. You got a place to go, okay? And, and it's, so it's already all set up for you. And what I would also recommend, guys, is if you when you book a flight, book a red-eye flight. Book a midnight flight, okay? Uh, some of these airlines, I think Eva Air has them, where you get a red-eye flight. Because if you leave on a midnight flight out of, out of the U.S., you're going to get into the Philippines uh, right around 11 or 12 o'clock in the afternoon, which is perfect. OK, the majority of the flights when you get into the Philippines are going to be late in the evening, 10, 30, 11, 11, 30. Uh, but again, uh, it's, it's you know, probably better for you if you could get there in the after, uh, in the early morning or late morning, I should say, because by the time you get to Manila, if you get to Manila around 10, 30, 11, and then you go through customs because Manila can be pretty busy at customs. They may take you an hour to get through customs. Uh, so you're out of there by 12, 1230. Generally, though, you can't check into a hotel till about two o'clock in the afternoon anyway. So by the time you get to your hotel, uh, you might be able to check in. OK, so again, if you book a red eye flight out of the U.S., you will get to Manila uh, in the late morning, early afternoon. OK, guys, that's that would be my recommendation. Let me look back here. Mark G says, what mall would you recommend? There's Green Belt. There's Glorietta. There's uh, there's the Power Plant Mall also, which is another mall. All these malls you can walk to if you're in Makati. If you're staying in the uh, like that the P Burgos area, there's a bunch of little hotels there, all in that area. You can you can walk to any one of these malls, or you can take a quick taxi ride to these malls. Uh, the Green Belt or Glorietta Mall malls, uh, you can take a jitney too if you wanted to down Makati Avenue. OK, uh, but if you take a taxi to any one of these malls, it's just like a it's like 100 pesos, 120 pesos. But you can take a jibby for 10 pesos. So just let you know. Yeah, the hot band uh, is a is a good value hotel in Makati. Uh, there's the Clipper Hotel if you want to uh, go a little bit, you know, more uh, expensive than the hot band. The Clipper Hotel, if you book them well in advance, you can get that for 28 bucks a night. Uh, and it's got a safe and your own, you know, the room's got a safe. The Internet is not bad from what I recall. Uh, it's a room with a, a king size bed. Oh, I think it was actually it was a queen. I think it was a queen. I can't remember. It's a queen or a king. I can't remember. But again, uh, these are again, anything under 30 bucks to me is a value as well. Uh, so but. The Clipper Hotel is a smaller hotel. I think there's only about 12 rooms. So if you book it late, it's going to cost you more. So the earlier you book it, the cheaper it's going to be. And that's, again, with any hotel uh, or just like airline tickets or hotel tickets, uh, hotel reservations. The, the, the earlier you book it, the cheaper the price is going to be. Expand at large. In Manila, I've always stayed at Broadway Court, a partel in New Manila. Okay. Uh, is that Quezon City, I presume? Two blocks from MRT. Yeah, uh, never stayed there, but uh, let's see. One bedroom apartment costs 27. Yeah, it's a monthly rate. That's a little high, but again, 27K. Again, it depends. Uh, the problem with a monthly apartment is uh, uh, if you if you rent it for the whole month, expat at large. Uh, here, uh, it might be somebody's first trip. They might want to be a week here, maybe a week somebody else in a different area. I don't think I would want to stay for a whole month in that same area. You know. Let's see. Uh, we did. Uh, let's see. Expect large for a hotel. The hopping is great. The only thing I didn't like is it reminds me of the Red Planet. Uh, yeah, Red Planet is another one that's inexpensive. Robinson's Place is a good mall in Malata, Malate. Yeah, there's a lot of inexpensive hotels in Malate. And what I was going to recommend, uh, it's good that you talked about Malate, Jeff, is if it's your first trip, again, you might want to spend a week in, in Makati. And then after that, just grab a grab taxi and just maybe spend a week in Ermita just to see the differences of what it's like being in a uh, Metro Manila versus be, being actually in Manila. Uh, and you'll see a big difference. So maybe spend a week at each area. So what I would do is actually spend a week in Makati, spend a week in Ermita, and maybe spend another week uh, in, uh, somewhere else outside of Manila. Maybe fly somewhere, maybe do Maggetti or maybe Cebu fly somewhere somewhere else for a week, and then just come back to Manila and then fly out of Manila. So let's see, expat at large, let's see, Philippines. 
Robinson Mall is a place, good mall in Malate. Oh, I already read that one. Expand at Large Magnolia is a high class mall with a piano playing as you enter. Okay. Fishing Buddy, agree, Jeff. Robinson is a nice mall, good size. Yeah, and it's not overwhelming. And then there's all kinds of uh, food options there at the Robinson Mall. So a lot of different food options you can you can get. And uh, it's very, to me, uh, Ermita, Malate, it's a very safe area. I've never had any issues there, just like Makati. Expand at large. Magnolia is like five minutes by cab from Green Hills. I've never been there, but I wouldn't mind checking it out. Mark G, how about a car rental? Uh, is it safe as USA? You know what? Uh, I've never rented a car. Uh, if you're comfortable driving in Manila, yeah, go for it. Uh, if you, you know, drive in to areas where outside of Manila, you want to drive somewhere, that's cool. Uh, again, I've never rented a car. Uh, the trans transportation, if you're going to just rent a car to get around Manila, I wouldn't rent. I wouldn't recommend it. It's just easier to take taxis and jump in the jeepneys. But if you're going to take a jeepney, or public transportation in Manila, you got to know uh, where you're going. Uh, there's no actual, uh, like a schedule or a map or anything. <laughs> I mean, what I would recommend is you get a map of of Manila, of Metro Manila. It'll show you the streets. That's what I had. Uh, but then you're going to have to kind of, if you're taking a jitney across town, you're going to have to kind of look at the streets and look on the jitney and see where it's going. Uh, you got to know where you're going. There's no actual uh, schedules or maps that show you how you get there. But if you got Google Map on your phone, that will help you if you take a jitney. But you can always ask the jitney drivers where they're going. Uh, but again, uh, it's a, it's going to be a little tougher taking jitneys across town. Better off just taking a cab, a taxi across town. It's really cheap. Might only cost you about four or five bucks. You know. Clipper, a real budget old hotel street from yeah Burgo Street. What are the better expat bars in Manila? Uh, food, music. I'm not a big bar person. Uh, Jeff would be more the person to ask that question. Jeff, if you want to put a couple of names of bars in Ermita. Uh, also in Makati, the uh, Cubana, the, there's a Cubana restaurant. A lot of expats go there in the P. Burgos area. If you look around the P. Burgos area, Mark G, there's a bunch of uh, restaurants there. I don't know, I can't remember offhand all their names. Uh, but it's just like a strip of about two or three streets right there. A lot of different uh, restaurants where a lot of expats hang out at. You can't miss it. So the P. Burgos area, if you're looking for expat bars, would be the area to go to in Makati. Uh, in Ermita, there are a lot of bars there. Again, I'm not a big bar person. Uh, you'll have to, Jeff can maybe put a couple of bars, uh, recommendations of bars there uh, in the chat. Ermita is a war zone. <laughs> yeah, Malate, yeah. Malate and Ermita, when I say Ermita, I'm almost so talking like Malate. They're all right next to each other. Joe, when I go out there, I plan on going straight to the province. No big city. Yeah, some people prefer the province. Uh, and, again, some people prefer the big city. It just depends what you're looking for. Uh, the big city has the bars, the clubs. You know, that's a lot of people prefer to do that. Uh, in the province, not not – as much to do, it's a lot more quieter. It just depends what you're looking for. Yeah, Ermita, yeah, you're getting a lot more smog in the Manila area, a lot more cars, not a lot more smog. I noticed that as well. Expand at large. Actually, to be honest, my first time in the Philippines, I didn't want to travel all over the place. Yeah, I just wanted to stay in the metro area and learn the cor uh, all the corners just at JLB. And that's, again, that's what I'm recommending here, guys. On your first trip, again, you're just trying to get your feet wet. I, I don't want you to be bouncing all over trying to get to uh, this island or that island. I remember on my first trip, uh, when I first came, I was actually supposed to meet uh, three women. Uh, one of them actually kind of weirded out on me the day before I came because I didn't get back to her in time to talk to her. So she, she blocked me on Facebook, which I didn't care. The other one literally sent me a message and said, hey, let's meet in Boracay. Uh, and she left for Boracay the day before, and I just sent her a message like, 
I'm just coming into Manila. I don't even know how to get to Boracay. So I told her, hey, get back to me, you know, when you get back in town. And the third one was is actually my wife. She met me at the airport. And I basically stayed in Manila the whole time. And she showed me all over Manila. Uh, she showed me, you know, we, we actually stayed in Makati. I rented a hotel in Makati, which was the Clipper, because I didn't really uh, – she was from Manila, but she was from Ermita. But I, I just chose a neutral area uh, to meet, so that's why I don't don't go to anybody's compound. If you're meeting a girl, don't go to her, her parents' compound. Don't stay there because they're gonna pressure you into money. This that you, you can get into you can get into some trouble. So again, you if you're gonna meet somebody, you always want to meet meet them on a neutral area. Pick your own hotel and meet them at your hotel. Now they don't have to stay with you, uh, and a good girl won't. A good girl is not going to stay with you in your hotel room. So you can get them a hotel room, uh, but don't go to their uh, compound. Don't go to – you want to meet them in a neutral area. That's what I would recommend. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hobbit House, <laughs> the Swag Man, and Southern Cross shut down. Okay. Oh, the Southern Cross is shut down? Okay. And then what's that other one, uh, JLB and Ermita? Uh, uh, it's a big uh, – it's down the street from MH Del Pilar around the corner. You know which one I'm talking about. It's a big expat bar. I uh, can't get the name of it. Doesn't uh, I'll think of the name. Uh, let's see. The Lewis Garden Hotel. Yeah, Mabini Street. Yeah, Mabini Padreford is a lot of hotels there. Owned by expat. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff is definitely the uh, Ermita and Malate expert. So, again, anything on, on bars and hotels that you guys want to find out about or expat hangouts, Jeff will be able to steer you guys better than I. That's for sure. Uh, let's see. Cowboy Grill. Okay, cool. Thanks, Fishing Buddy. Uh, let's see. Uh, the G Point. Ah, Okay. Uh, you know what? Another good restaurant is Jerry's Grill to go to. A little pricey, uh, but I would recommend that restaurants get good food. Hey, Jedi, how you doing? Thanks for coming in. Uh, okay, so I want to get back to the topic. So you guys got me all over the place, but that's cool, though. I, I'm, get, I'm glad you guys are giving out a good information out there in the chat. Uh, like I say, uh, for you guys that are new here, uh, just, you know, these are guys that are in my chat that some of these guys like Roger Miller, he's been living in the Philippines for, I think, over 10 years, maybe 15. He's a good guy, too. And he lives in the Dabao area. So anybody going to Dabao, you know, you guys want to ask Roger any questions in the chat, he'll be able to steer you right. Uh, Jeff and uh, Fishing Buddy, I think, are more like Manila kind of guys or Mita Makati. Uh, I'm more geared now towards Dumaguete. Uh, so, again, uh, lots of good people in here that will give you good information. They'll steer you the right way if you're new here uh, for all the new people that are coming here in this live chat. Uh, Philippine Street Food, Mark G. Uh, here's what I would recommend for Philippine Street Food. Don't do it unless if you're with a Filipina, you, if you have a girlfriend, and she will steer you the right way. Uh, and tell you which street food to eat from, okay? Uh, like, for example, my wife, when we go to uh, eat street food, and we occasionally do eat to these little carinderias, and, and there's some great value in these carinderias, the problem is you want to eat at the one that you're not going to get sick at. So if you have a girlfriend, she will tell you which carinderia to eat from. She'll check it out. Uh, and especially you want to go to a Carinderia where there's a lot of people that are going to it. That means if it's good, it's probably going to be healthy uh, and it's packed with people. That's the ones you want to go to. Stay away from the Carinderias that you don't see anybody in. That's probably the ones that either the food's not good or you got to be careful. Uh, and also just check out the food. You know, if it's out there while you got flies and stuff around it, that's not, you don't want to eat from that Carinderia. All right. And try to catch these Karen dairies when they first open. That's when the food's going to be the freshest. But your girlfriend or your wife will guide you the right way. She'll tell you which Karen Daria to eat from. And I, I, I do occasionally eat at Karen Daria's and it can be great deals. I mean, you can feed two people for about 100, 120 pesos. And that includes a bottle of Royal Pop. Uh, but again, uh, 
again, you got to make sure you go to the right ones or you can get sick. I've never gotten sick, uh, but I don't need a lot of care in the areas, but I do occasionally go to them, you know. Uh, let's see, street food. <laughs> yeah, do you gamble? Uh, again, like I just said, uh, your significant other will tell you which ones to eat at. Uh, yeah, Thailand's got great street food from my, from my understanding. Jerry, that's the best, best advice you can give. Don't ever go with the girl to her compound, especially if you just met her recently. Yeah, again, it's just my opinion. I wouldn't do that. I've heard some horror stories. Uh, but, you know, it's up to you. I wouldn't do it. Uh, okay, let's see. Davao's got great food. Yes, the night market had some great food there. Uh, but the Davao does have great food, that's for sure. The food is another question. True, it ain't Thailand. Yes. Food courts in the malls are good alternatives. Yeah, I would rather go to a food court in a mall instead of uh, doing street food. Yes, I would definitely agree. A little bit more expensive, uh, but definitely I would agree on that. Jedi, you really need to be in cahoots with the locals when it comes to safe street food vendors. Yeah, yeah, it's good that you know. If you know the uh, the owner of the Karen Daria, you, you'll know if it's good or not, for sure. All right, so let's get back to the topic, guys. So, again, what I would recommend is a, a book. If you want to book your whole, your hotel ahead of time, uh, you should. If you already have, you know, what I do is when I go to the Philippines, especially when on my first few trips, I, I set up an itinerary, itinerary where I pretty much knew exactly where I was going to be at for the whole trip from beginning to the end. So what I did is I booked my hotel room. So let's say, for example, you're coming into Manila. You want to stay a week in Makati. So you book your hotel in Makati for a week ahead of time. Say then you're going to shift over to Ermita for a week. You can also book your hotel room in Ermita. I mean, that's your choice. The, uh, the longer ahead of time you book it, the cheaper the room's probably going to be. And then on your third week, say you got a third week, you may want to uh, spend a week in, I don't know, Dumaguete, or you want to spend a week uh, in Angeles City. You can book your, uh, your hotel room in Angeles City ahead of time. And then what you want to do is uh, when you're – and wherever, say you're in Ermita, right? Your second week, at the end of your second week, throughout your second week, what you want to do is you want to look for transportation to get to Angeles City, okay? And there's the Victory Liner, which is a bus you can catch. Uh, I think it, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, at Robinson Mall in Ermita or in uh, Malate, I think the, uh, the Victory Liner bus, you can catch a bus there that goes uh, all the way out to Angeles City. I know that you from Terminal 3, you can catch a bus, Victory Liner, that goes to Angeles City. Again, when you're in Ermita, you can at least figure out how to get to Angeles City, okay? It's up to you. But you can actually book your uh, hotel room ahead of time. So, again, there goes the, your itinerary for three weeks. You can spend a week in Manila. Uh, in, in Mercati, you can spend a week in Ermita. And your last week, you can spend uh, in Angeles City, and that's what you can, and you can do that if that's what you want to do. So you can book all your hotel rooms ahead of time. So, uh, and and it's 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 a plus when you got the internet nowadays. In the old days when I used to travel, there was no internet. Whatever town you get to, you got this little let's, you know, you got a little book that tells you where the hotels are. You just call them up, you go and you just find a place to stay. So nowadays it's a lot easier to travel with computers and all that stuff. Hey, Michael V, how you doing? Thanks for coming. They don't have the bus, Jeff. They don't have that uh, the bus anymore from uh, from Robinson Mall in Malate. Uh -huh. There is a bus that you can catch somewhere else. I think I don't know if it's in Pasai, uh, but but it's there. You just have to find where it's at. There is a bus that stops in Manila somewhere that, that you can get. But again, you can go online and just uh, Google Victory Liner and it'll show you where the bus stops or you know where the, where the bus depot is to, to catch the bus. All the buses to the airport and entrance from Robinson no longer is going. Okay. Oh. Okay. And why is that? 
That would be a good video to put up, Jeff. Uh, why did the buses stop going? Uh, is it because of the uh, coronavirus or is it just because it wasn't profitable? I think Moabal, Porta Galara, and Tegaita, hey, Tom, would be the best places to visit for sure. Tom, hey, Tom, thanks for coming in. Uh, yeah, but we're just kind of doing uh, – this live stream is more geared towards the people that are coming to the Philippines for their first trip, literally their first trip. So we're just trying to – do a kind of a, a video where it's kind of, you know, recommending people just to kind of hang around, hang out around the Manila area, just to kind of get their feet wet and kind of get to learn the culture a little bit about, you know, what's going on in the Philippines and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, if you're a more experienced traveler, especially to the Philippines, then I would recommend, uh, yeah, don't stay in Manila. But again, if you don't have much experience or hardly no experience coming to the Philippines and, you got to kind of start somewhere, and that's kind of what this live stream is uh, we're trying to do here to help people, you know, kind of get accustomed and get their feet wet uh, on their first trip to the Philippines. Victory Liner on Etsa, yes, in Cubao. Yes, that's for sure. You can get it in Cubao. leaves every 30 minutes. Okay, yeah, that's where it is. Okay, that's where you got to get it from. From the Etsa terminal. So that's where you got to go. And again, uh, yeah, so basically if you're a first timer, then just basically take a taxi to the ETSA terminal and take the Victory Liner from there. Now, if you want to take a private car to get to Angeles City, uh, I do have a video where I recommend a guy with a private car that will take you to Angeles. It's going to cost you with the tolls and everything about 3,000 pesos, just like, you know, it's about 60 bucks. Uh, oh, I see. You spoke to a guy and he didn't know why the bus has stopped. Oh, they stopped doing it late last year. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to know. Hey, Jeff, you should do a video on that. That would be a great video to do to let people know and let them be aware of that. All right, guys, so let's uh, go back to the topic. So basically, you got your passport, you got your ticket, uh, your round trip ticket, six months out, you're flying into the, to Manila. You've been looking at YouTube channels and you've got at least some somewhat of an idea of what to expect when you get to the Philippines. You're doing, you're doing some homework here, okay? Uh, let's say that you've met somebody and uh, they're going to come and help you out. OK, you're going to meet somebody when you first get to Manila and we're going to talk about that in a, in a little bit. You already got your hotel room. OK, uh, and uh, the, the, your first trip is going to be less than 30 days. So you don't have to worry about an onward ticket. You got your hotel rooms all set up. OK, so let's just say you're going to be a week in Makati, a week in Ermita. And let's just say you're going to be a week in Angeles City. We'll just do that. So you got your hotel rooms booked ahead of time. So the next thing I want to talk about is how much money that you should bring on your first trip, on, your, on this trip, okay, guys? And what I would recommend, since you all your hotel rooms are prepaid, your hotel's already, I mean, your uh, flight's already been prepaid. Uh, so you basically, uh, your expenses, your living expenses have been prepaid. All you got to do is bring enough money to buy food, and party, beer money, and emergency money. So what I would recommend, since a lot of stuff has been prepaid, I'd recommend you bring $1,500, okay? If you feel that that's not enough, you're going to party up a little bit more, then bring $2,000. But $1,500 should be enough as your pocket money. What I would recommend is uh, when you come to the Philippines, you get a money belt, Okay, to keep your money in. Uh, do not change any uh, any of your dollars for pesos in your foreign in the uh, your home country because you're going to get a really bad rate. Uh, your rate is going to be probably about a four to five pesos what you can get here in the Philippines. Uh, I remember on my first trip I was going to go through my Chase Bank just to see what the rate was. Uh, to change maybe a hundred dollars worth of uh, to get a hundred dollars worth of pesos, they were going to give me thirty nine pesos to the dollar. 
and uh, the rate was 43. So again, I didn't, I waited till I got to the Philippines. And what you can do is you'll get a better rate at the airport. It's not the greatest rate at the airport, but it's a, you'll get a better rate at the Philippine airport, at the Manila airport, than you will in your home country's bank. Because uh, these US banks don't really trade in a Philippine peso much. So that's why you gotta get a really shitty rate. So you're gonna bring about $1,500. You're gonna change, you can change about $100 worth at the Manila airport. And then what you what I would recommend is uh, once you get to your hotel, okay, and again, uh, when you come in out of the uh, customs and all that, you just get a grab. Now, here's the thing. When you come out of customs, now you're going to bring about $1,500 with you, right, guys? That should be enough for you to party. Now, what you want to do is you want to bring a couple of credit cards with you, okay, in case you run out of money. And you need to get to an ATM. Now, I normally don't recommend debit cards, but if you want to bring your debit cards, it's up to you. But I would recommend bringing credit cards and using your credit cards at an ATM machine to get cash. All right. Now, make sure that when you bring your credit cards that you have your um, ATM passcodes so that uh, – you're able to get money out of the ATM. But I would prefer that you use an, a credit card at an ATM than you would use a debit card in a, at an ATM. That's just my recommendation. See you later, Jedi. Thanks for coming in, man. Let's see. Uh, expand at large, 3000 if you're a sim and going to buy everything. Uh, look, guys, uh, uh, and we're going to talk. I want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, always bring two cards. For sure. If you're going to bring a debit card, then bring at least one credit card with you. Uh, so one credit, one debit. I generally don't bring debit cards. I just bring two credit cards and cash. Okay. Now, the other option that you have, guys, is that you can set up a third-party money transfer company like uh, Remitly's one. World Remit is another one, but Remit is a good one. Set it up when you're in the U.S., Okay. And has and set yourself up as yourself as a recipient, and you can you can send yourself money while you're in the Philippines. Uh, just go on your laptop or go on your uh, smartphone or go on your iPad. Send yourself money as a cash pickup at a local BPI bank or Metro Bank or BDO Bank, and you can go pick yourself up cash, pesos. Uh, you just walk into the bank there. The uh, the, uh, what do you call it? Remitly will give you a number, like a reference number. You walk into the bank with your passport, or your ID, and you can pick up cash. So you can send yourself money to the Philippines, okay? Uh, so that you can do that as well. So it's up to you. Uh, you can go to an ATM, use your credit card to get cash, or you can send yourself money using a third-party uh, money transfer company. OK. Um, also, let's see. Expand charge and keep money at home. Yeah, you can't touch. So in case you go overboard and spend all that. Yeah. Good idea. Expand at large. And that's where if you when you rent a hotel room, try to rent a hotel room with a safe. They don't all have a safe. And a lot of times, you know, when you're online, uh, it could tell you uh, when you look at all the amenities at the hotel will give you. Sometimes it'll say that it comes with a safe, and when you get to the hotel, it doesn't have a safe. That could happen also. So again, uh, make sure that you get, uh, you, can, you rent a hotel room that has a safe, or maybe, you know, when you're in chat rooms or you're talking to people, ask, you know, talk to people and see uh, hotels that they've wrecked, that they have rented to have a safe. Because if you rent a hotel with a safe, then you can keep the majority of your money in the safe. If you got a girl in your room, you can keep a lot of your valuables in the safe. If you fall asleep, at least she can't rip you off or, you know, she takes a few dollars from you, then, you know, at least you don't lose everything, all right? So that would be my recommendation. Try to rent a hotel room with a safe. Hey, Fies, how you doing? Thanks for coming in. Let's see. I'm reading the chat. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Good point, Jeff. You don't want them to lock your card. Yes, always bring extra cards because uh, your card might get locked. But, again, guys, if you're going to bring credit cards – let your uh, bank know the dates that you're traveling to the Philippines so that the, they don't lock your card out, okay? So if you just happen to just now, – now, Capital One, guys, uh, supposedly that you can – you don't even have to tell Capital One 
that uh, you're going on a trip. Uh, what happens with Capital One is uh, if you use your card at a location because it's got the chip, uh, they will let the card, the transaction go through. But I would just to be on the safe side, always let your bank know and give them the dates when you're in whatever country that you're in uh, so that they don't lock you out. Because what happens is once they lock you out of your card, you might have kind of a hassle trying to get a hold of them to unlock your card. So always make sure you give your travel dates to your bank before you leave your home country. All right. Uh, yes, expat at large, the Charles Schwab card is great and you get your fees reimbursed from my understanding. Yep. If they re will reimburse your ATM fees. Money belt, as I said, is a good uh, is another option. Highly recommended when you're traveling. But again, if you're going to bring somebody back to your hotel room, uh, I would highly recommend you have a safe because you don't know that person and uh, you don't want to get ripped off. Security is a can be a big issue. Uh, okay, you had uh, five says you had thirteen thousand dollars on him last time to buy a second motorbike. Yeah, well, you got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, uh, you see, I use money belts too. Uh, I try not to go to ATMs. Yeah, again, guys, if you don't have to use an ATM and you can use cash, that's what I would recommend. Because the the, the more you use the ATM, the higher the higher the probability of getting your card hacked. So you got to be careful. Yeah, uh, yeah, like I said, yeah, hide money in your socks. Don't put all your money in one one spot. Obviously, put money in your uh, your uh, belt. Your money belt, put some money maybe uh, in your, you know, a little bit of money somewhere in your backpack and maybe in a little bit of money in your pocket. All right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, uh, so basically, uh, you're, you're all set, guys, for your trip. Okay. You ready? You got your hotel room, you got your ticket, uh, you know how much money you're bringing. So, and then you, you're going to bring a couple of credit cards. You know how much cash you bring in. One of the things I want to recommend also is the type of bag you want to travel with, okay? And Jeff, uh, he's done a, a video on this. I've done a video on this, and I'm sure 50 million other guys have done a, a video on this. When you travel to the Philippines, especially on your, on your first trip, don't be overpacked. What I would recommend is traveling with one carry-on bag, okay? And then you can bring one other, one other item with a carry-on bag. And I would recommend bringing a – the maximum size for a carry-on bag is 14 by 22 by 9. So it's 22 inches in height, 14 in width, and, and 9 inches in depth. And that is more than enough, guys for all the clothes you're going to need to bring to the Philippines. When you come to the Philippines, you don't need a suit. You don't – generally, I, I mean, I've never bought a long sleeve shirt. Actually, I've, I've, uh, let me rephrase that. I brought one long long sleeve, uh, uh, like a – kind of like a – not a sweatshirt, but a shirt in case, you know, it gets cool or something like that on the flight or something coming in or you're somewhere where the air con's kicked up and it's really cold. Uh, but in general, just bring T-shirts, you know, five, six pairs of T-shirts, one long sleeve shirt. Uh, I would also bring about three pairs of cargo pants, five pairs, six pairs of socks, you know, a couple of pairs, one pair of flip-flops, pair of gym shoes. You don't really need a lot of stuff to bring with you guys. Uh, and here's the thing. Now, if you're – uh, if you check on, if your carry-on bag is a little bit heavier than what it's supposed to be, but you don't have a check-in bag, most of these airlines won't say anything. They'll let you bring that carry-on bag. At least Eva Air does that. So, for example, uh, I had a trip where my uh, carry-on bag was supposed to be no more than, I think it was 11 kilos, and a check-in bag was up to 27 kilos. I didn't have a check-on bag. A check-in bag, but my carry-on was like, I think it was like 15 kilos. They let me bring the bag. Uh, they didn't charge me extra uh, because I had no check-in bag. So, again, with Eva Air, they're pretty cool. I can't remember if Asian and Korean airlines were cool, but from what I recall, they were. 
Uh, but that's all you need, guys. Uh, and the less uh, stuff you got, I would just get a backpack. Uh, some guys like the uh, wheels, you know, the uh, little backpacks with wheels. You can do that. Uh, but don't overpack because it's a hassle to travel when you overpack, man. It sucks. Oh, hey, Jedi, you're back. Uh, 513K, what type of bike? And blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, the, good, uh, the good thing about carry-on is you don't have to wait for the carousel to get, yes, to get your luggage. Yeah, I don't like to get luggage for my carry-on. Uh, I mean, for my check-in. I mean, look, if you got a check-in, it's going to meet you at your destination. So you don't have to, you know, grab your check-in bag in between flights. But the thing is, when you're coming out of Manila, you got to, you know, after going through customs, you got to wait for your bag. Sometimes you may have to wait 20, 30 minutes, depending, you know, if you're the last bag, <laughs> if you're the first one to check your bag in. So, again, I don't like to wait for anything. I'm ready to go, you know, when I get through customs, just like Jeff, you know, Jeff says. Uh, let's see. Expand, uh, if your room has no save, uh, I've hidden money on the bottom of the baby. <laughs> yeah, again, if your room's got no save, just find some areas in your room where you can hide some money, you know, or where you can hide your iPad or where you can hide your laptop. So, yeah, there are places you can hide your shit for sure. <laughs> oh, Jeff, you came uh, first time with a big suitcase. Yeah, that's a mistake. And I still see people bring their big suitcase, man. And I'm wondering why. I mean, it's just a hassle just to move from one hotel to another. It really, really, really sucks. Uh, so, again, uh, try to, you know, travel light, guys. You can pretty much bring everything in a large carry-on that you need. Let's see. Uh, okay. All right. So, again, so you figured out what type of bag that you're going to carry. And basically, the other thing that I would say about this topic is uh, either bring an iPad, bring a small 14-inch laptop, uh, or you're going to bring your smartphone. Uh, if you got a smartphone, I would still bring either a small laptop or an iPad. That, but that's just me, uh, just to travel with. Because uh, it's a lot easier if you need to do something, if you need to buy another ticket. Uh, uh, or if you need to do something online, I would definitely uh, would uh, would bring a smart uh, would bring an iPad or another uh, laptop, and and that's basically it, guys. I mean, you're good to go. If you just follow some of the steps that we talked about just now, you're pretty much good to go. Oh, and one thing I want to talk about. So, and once you arrive, so you know you you go through you went through all these steps and you got ready once you arrive in the philippines and if you're going to meet somebody and that's really another topic but i want to throw this out and pretty much jeff can tell you the same thing uh, and also fishing buddy and some of the other guys here in the chat expat at large can tell you the same thing if you're going to meet somebody here and they're going to come to the airport and especially at the manila airport to pick you up that's great nothing wrong with that of, of having a woman come to the airport to come and get you uh, what you do is when you go through customs, uh, you go through the carousel. If you got a, a check-in bag, you pick up your bag. You keep going straight. You go through double doors. Uh, if you walk across the street and go to the lower level, that's where you're going to meet that person that's going to come and pick you up. Uh, there's like an area there where all the uh, uh, people that, uh, you know, the uh, people come and pick you up that you can meet there. That's like a meet and greet area. Uh, and then you can take that person, come back up to the higher level. You just all you gotta do is just ask. Make sure you just ask in a nice way. The uh, security guard there, just say, "Hey, I just picked up my girlfriend here. I got my girlfriend across the street. You see her? Can we go back up and get a taxi or a grab? They're real cool. They'll let you come back up, and then just come back up and get a grab or a taxi. Okay, not a problem. Uh, very easy." Uh, but, yeah, if you want somebody coming and get you at the airport, nothing wrong with that. Let's see. Jedi says, uh, I was looking for swim shorts and I own 36-inch waist and never had that size. Yeah, and look, guys, uh, if you're a heavier set or you're a bigger dude or whatever, uh, you're like, say, you're a 2XL. I can find T-shirts. I'm a 2XL here. I'm an XL in the U.S., but I'm a 2XL here in the Philippines. For me, I can still find stuff my size. 
but again, you're just coming on vacation here. Bring a lot of your own stuff. If you can pick up a T-shirt here and there, that's fine. T-shirts are a lot less expensive here, but uh, yeah, again, uh, this the video that we talked on today, the, the topic we talked on more for people that are just coming for vacation. So if you're coming for a vacation, you can bring your own, all your own stuff. But yeah, the bigger malls, especially in Manila, uh, all the tourist area where you see a lot of foreigners like Manila and Cebu, they're going to have the larger sizes. Even here in Dumaguete, man, you got a lot of foreigners here. Uh, you got people with larger sizes here. Uh, you know, they sell stuff with larger sizes. So again, but hey guys, if you're coming into Manila uh, and you're looking for the uh, for a, a video on the Manila airport or where to go and stuff like that, I've got a video on my site on my YouTube channel that'll show you everything uh, where it's located at. And there's also an update video on the uh, Manila airport as well. So other than that, I mean, we've been going on here for 84 minutes. Uh, I think I'm gonna probably bring uh, this stream to an end. I'm going to look in the chat here, see if there's any questions that you guys had before we bring this chat to a close. But hey, I really appreciate um, you guys coming to my chat. I'll probably start doing some more live streams. Uh, if you guys can hit me up on some thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, Roger Miller and uh, there was somebody else that gave me a super chat. Oh, Jeff, Jeff, JLB, both you guys, uh, thanks a lot for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Uh, again, uh, I'll start doing some more live streams. Uh, whatever amount of people that want to come and watch, whether it's 10 people, 15 people, five people, I really don't care. Uh, I pretty much keep the trolls out of here. Uh, I'll give out a couple of more wrenches here for you guys. Uh, but oh, we had a couple of trolls. I got rid of them, which was cool. Uh, if you guys with the wrenches see a troll, uh, you don't really have to ask me. I mean, if the guy says something stupid, uh, you want to go ahead and just time them out. That's cool. Go ahead and time them out. They can come back on. If, if they get really out of control, then we just remove them. I'll block them. I got already got a bunch of people blocked. I know I got a lot of trolls that complain that I've got, I've got a lot of people blocked. So I hear other trolls complaining on other channels that they're all, all their sock accounts and their regular account is blocked. So it's really funny. I don't really need the, the nonsense from the trolls, so I don't have a problem blocking them and get, get rid of them. So, But, again, uh, hopefully uh, you guys uh, – I mean, you guys are already – all you guys here in the live stream pretty much are, are uh, experienced coming to the Philippines and other Asian countries. But if somebody that doesn't have a lot of experience and sees my video here, my live stream, and goes through it, it's more for the for – the, uh, for the novice, the, the you know the beginners that are trying to come out to Southeast Asia or to the Philippines, and kind of what I want to do. That's why I want to do this live stream. So again, uh, <laughs> yeah, Corleone went back to his glory era. Yeah, that, that's true. Uh, expand large. Sometimes girls get cold feet and don't show up. Yeah, guys, look. If you got somebody, uh, just like expand large says, uh, if somebody is supposed to meet you at the airport and she gets cold feet and doesn't show up, well, just move on with your trip. I mean, look, you go there, you wait for her in the uh, meet and greet area. She give her, and keep in mind, she can be on Filipino uh, Filipino time, so she might get there 30, 30 minutes to an hour. If you're able to contact her on your cell phone, give her a call. I would wait 30 minutes. If she ain't there, yeah, it's time to leave. Go back up, get yourself a, a, a cab, a taxi and then go to your hotel. Okay, like I say, if you do the red, if you do the red eye flights, you leave at night. You'll come in during the day. It'll be you'll be more comfortable jumping onto a taxi during the day than you would at night. So try to come, try to get to the Philippines during the day. You'll be a lot more comfortable, especially if it's your first trip. Let's see, uh, <laughs> flush them down the toilet. That's where they belong. Yeah, troll patrol. Yeah, I agree with you. Let's see, Philippines. Oh, wait, hang it. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Ah, I destroyed trolls first on my channel before I terminate them. Yeah, yeah. I just don't want to deal with trolls. You know, I can really mess with them, but eh, once in a while, it just depends what mood I'm in, guys. If I'm not in the mood to deal with them, I just put them on timeout, or I just pretty much just block them. So it just depends. And, you know, I'll give them a timeout a couple times. I don't care. They come back. 
I just don't even pay attention to them. I'll put them on timeout, and somebody else wants to time them out or block them, go for it. But hey, other than that, hey, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, thank you for all the feedback uh, from all you guys in the, in the live stream uh, for um, putting some good info out there for people that people had questions about you know, restaurants in certain areas of Manila or hotels or whatever. Really appreciate it. I appreciate uh, you guys coming in and helping me out with this first live stream. Again, uh, thanks a lot. If anybody has any questions, please leave it in the comments section. If you guys want to give me a thumbs up, that's great. If you want to give me a thumbs down, that's your choice. You could do that too. Edward Crandall, uh, WP maybe just joining. Don't know if you covered this. Whatever you – Dude, don't rent a car. Yeah, that was the first, first big mistake. Edward, somebody uh, earlier said, what do I think about renting a car? I've never rented a car. Uh, if you're just going to stick around Manila, you don't need to rent a car. You can just do everything by using a cab, a taxi. If you're going to rent, uh, rent a car, be careful. I've heard of scams uh, where they try to get more money out of you. They said... Uh, there's a scratch this or there's a ding there or whatever to try to get more money. If you rent a car uh, to maybe go to the, go out of town or whatever or go further out, make sure you video the whole car uh, before you know you leave just to have proof that there were no dings or anything like that. But to be honest with you, I've never rented a car. Never rented a car. I would prefer to use public transportation. It's cheaper. Uh, to get to my other destinations. I wouldn't recommend renting a car, but that's just me. Uh, let's see. Uh, just out of curiosity, Edward, what uh, what happened to you when you rented a car? If you could let us know in the chat, that would be great. I'll hang on for a few minutes just to see what you say. Uh, let's see. Thanks a lot, guys, for the thumbs up. Uh, how often will I do lives? Uh, you know what? I'm not really sure, Jeff. Um, I might start doing maybe once or twice a week instead of just doing a video. I might just do the same topic and do a live. Uh, I'll just, you know, what I'll do is I'll with certain other channels. I'll make sure that I don't coincide with you guys when you guys are on. Even though, even if I do a live stream at the same time, you you do a live stream. It doesn't matter. I don't think I'll take away your your uh, your 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 guest to come and watch mine. But just in case. Uh, I'll, pro I'll make sure that uh, I'll do one that's while you're not doing yours because I may want to come on your live stream. So uh, I probably won't do it at the same time you're doing yours. I'll probably send, shoot you an email and say, hey, uh, I'm about to do a live stream at such and such day or such and such time. Are you doing yours at the same time? But I know you usually do yours on Saturday, so I probably won't do it on that day. I'll probably do it during the week. All right. But I'll double check with you. Hey, Agante, how you doing? You postpone your trip till April. Oh, okay. I, you know, I know. I heard. Uh, I talked to Lynn. I ran into Lynn the other day, and she said you were coming in February. But then I thought I saw somewhere where you said you were postponing till April, but I wasn't sure. Uh, I presume that's because of the virus going around. Uh, yeah, Jeff. Eventually, I'll probably have people on my guest on my panel once I figure out how to put the link in the chat. But I don't think it'll be hard to put the link in the chat. I presume I can just copy the link from here and just just paste it in the chat. But I probably eventually will do that. Yeah, because from my understanding, using StreamYards, you can actually protect yourself a lot better uh, than using uh, the regular uh, the regular uh, live stream from uh, Google. Edward said, "Only use the once. Cost me around 300 bucks for a week." Oh, wow. Yeah, that is kind of expensive. Well, $300. Uh, that, I don't know. Is that considered expensive? Sure, Jeff, for sure. I'll hit you up for sure. Uh, let's see. Car, uh, Jeff said, car rentals are terrible in PI. I've done it once. I will never do it again. It's a ripoff, and they have old vehicles and high mileage. Ah, okay. Any insurance is still an issue. I see. <laughs> Roger Miller says, don't let a girl meet you in the airport or you're locked in. I got to agree with you. If you, if you guys are going to be playing the game and want to meet different girls, then do not, like Roger said, let a girl meet you at the airport because then you're locked in. So 
So what you do then is uh, just meet them individually at, at a, at a uh, neutral area, like at a restaurant or something like that. Yeah, don't even bring them back to your uh, uh, hotel. Uh, but definitely do not meet them at the airport. If you go, yeah, if you meet them at the airport, you're probably going to be locked in, guys. So like Roger said, yeah, I would agree with Roger on that. Uh, let's see, Sunday, Sunday Philippine time. Yeah, Sunday Philippine time is, is when you do your live stream, Jeff. I don't anticipate doing it on that day because uh, I usually uh, look to see what you're going to do. Or I sometimes, a lot of times on Sunday, I'm running around doing something. The last couple of Sundays, I was kind of busy doing stuff. Uh, so I kind of caught some of your live stream, uh, but I just didn't have the time to come on. I caught towards the end of the live stream and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I don't do them on them days. Let's see. Uh, my wife is a simp, a typical Makati, born and raised, always complains about dust and pollution. Made me buy a car. Eh. You know what? Uh, I was thinking about buying a car here, expat at large in Dumaguete, but I decided not to. The scooters are fine. Here's the problem when you buy a car. What they do is they scam you when you have to go buy a part. They charge you a really high price. And sometimes they don't even, these dealerships don't even fix your car unless you buy the price through them. And the price of the part is about five times where you can get the part uh, through a second after marketplace, but they won't give you the part number for you to, to get the part somewhere else. So they try to stick you like that. So personally, to be honest with you, I wouldn't buy a car because it can get quite expensive owning a car here. <laughs> yeah, you get stuck with that girl on the whole vacation if you have her pick you up at the airport. That's true. That's true. I agree with that, guys. Definitely. All right, guys. I've been on for, wow, 96 minutes. So I've been on long enough. Uh, it's time for me to go out, get off. Uh, I'm starving to death. i got to get something to eat. But thanks a lot for coming on, guys. I really appreciate the support. And I will talk to you guys on the next live stream. Again, thanks for coming, guys.